little bit of uh, what we're doing right now. We are sitting in Milestone Tavern. <laughs> Most of this in the middle of the day, it's <laughs> raining outside. Yes, yeah, it's pouring rain. We're having a, a killer gluten-free pizza. Sam just introduced me to the, the bacon date wrapped something yes. or other. Oh my God, basil. But I am 30 there. days vegetarian, oh. so I've got the vegetarian option going, mm -hmm. but it's still bloody fantastic. Yeah, and I think they actually gave me your bacon, so this is Excellent. extra bacon. Double bacon. And super awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very cool. All right, so, um, so I guess introductions, you know. Yeah, hey, who are you, bud? I'm Travis Ford, <laughs> uh, producer of the Endurance Talent USA podcast. Yep. Um, sitting here with Sam Pruitt. Mm -hmm. uh, Sam, you want to introduce yourself? And yeah, Samantha Pruitt, founder and CEO of Race Slow, um, ultra endurance athlete myself. And Travis, what else do you do besides this? Uh, so I am the uh, the man behind the curtain for Race Slow. I <laughs> handle all the, the marketing and social media marketing, um, getting into the website stuff, some of the blogging. Uh, and now a, uh, a hit podcast. <laughs> yeah, I see you as our storyteller, right? Oh. Because um, we gather a lot of content, we meet a lot of people, we do a lot of really cool things, and you help tell that story. Marketing for a company like yours, Sam, it, it gives me the chance to really tell cool stories yeah. and get people excited about running and excited about that endurance lifestyle, which is, it's so much more than saying, hey, we got a cool new sponsor. It's actually, hey, here's a company that really cares about what these people are doing with their lives, Yeah, and here's a fun way we get to talk about it so so at its root it's human connection yeah oh absolutely yeah. the reason why we're doing this podcast is because we feel like there's not such a thing like this doesn't live out there in the podcast world as it is there's there's tons of podcasts about you know what kind of cereal athletes eat in the morning and what kind of you know post race shoes thing wear. yeah shoes they train. wear exactly but there's stellar not, athletes but we haven't really come across anything that's specifically you know why and when that alarm goes off before sunrise, what inspires them to get up and get out of bed instead of just roll over and hit the snooze alarm like 95% of the rest of America, right? Yeah. I mean, so this is really a, this is really a why. And I'm really interested also in the why behind races exist, why the industry exists, why the mm -hmm. brands exist, mm -hmm. and how the space has even developed. So the why behind the scenes mm -hmm. is really important to me in terms of conveying that to our to our audience and helping them see and be having that you know up close and personal behind the scenes sort of experience with our guests <laughs> but really beyond that is um, so they can and we can out of our daily lives have a little bit of break reprieve mm -hmm. you know so endurance town USA is a destination it's a state of mind right yeah. so we really want people to leave their laptops and their cubicles and their commutes and for a short period of time 20 minutes out of their day have a mental and physical break where they can reconnect with what they love which is endurance sports yeah i love that that's great yeah it's Gosh, a state of mind you've been thinking about that one for a while mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah that was awesome oh yeah i'm all in on that <laughs> yeah yeah well, this is sweet so we just jump into maybe a little bit of q a yeah so who that's we who we are and so yeah. our deeper dive for today the intro um to this show and getting you just kind of wetting your whistle um, like for that. what's what's to come the platform is really us delivering the why behind the endurance mm. industry again it's a state of mind endurance town USA you're gonna visit that state of mind with us uh, when you tap in and tune in 20 minute bites here and there but mm. really what we're gonna be doing today is talking about ourselves and um, our own whys behind the scenes so you can get to know us and decide if you're gonna be on this journey with us hopefully you will at the end of the day um, knowing us a little <laughs> bit deeper on a more personal level we thought it's really who we are this um, podcast is about human connection so why not start with us So we uh, we stepped outside. Uh, it was getting a little little fun and crazy in there with the lunch crowd. It uh, was hectic. Yeah, yeah, it was going off. So we uh, we found a nice little quiet space outside, and it's you know the sun's come out, the rain has stopped. It's a beautiful afternoon. So uh, we're bringing the conversation out here. Yeah, so beautiful, so nice to be out here in the fresh air, actually. So let's continue, shall we? Yeah, absolutely. So let's uh, let's start this off by learning a little bit more about you, okay. Sam. Uh, obviously, I know you as the race director, uh, as the CEO and founder of Race Slow. Correct. Um, here in San Luis Obispo. Ten years old. Ten years this year. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. No kidding. Right. Did you ever think it would go quite this far, quite this fast? Um, yes, I absolutely <laughs> did. And I know all the work it's taken. <laughs> and so does my team. They awesome. know. We've worked our butts off. Yeah, That's but fantastic. we're super stoked. That's very funny. Um, well, so let's, let's, I guess, go back 10 years then. Mm -hmm. And um, gosh, what, what made you decide to go down this crazy path of, of being this race director and, and yeah. this company organizer? 
Well, Ray Slow was birthed out of the fact that I was on my own journey. Uh, that's about 18 years ago now. Okay. Um, to getting off the couch. So getting off the couch, uh, that wasn't pretty, but that had to happen first. So the real story is that I was a train wreck. I had a bunch of health problems. I was in sales and marketing in a whole other industry. Um, and not super happy and not feeling great. So out of just pure misery <laughs> and dysfunction, I got fed up. Um, I really decided I had to go back and rediscover physical fitness, um, solid nutrition, stress reduction, and some real holistic paths to get me healthy. Wow. And in that journey is where I found endurance sports. So I really owe it all to that miserable day <laughs> where I just got so disgusted and fed up. I thought, that's it. I, I got to turn right. I got to get off this path and I got to go another direction. That's yeah. how it really started. Wow. So that's, that's how uh, Samantha the athlete came around. She did. Yeah. 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 She didn't look like an athlete. So I was um, about 50 plus pounds overweight and not functioning very well so i couldn't really get through the day didn't have a lot of energy but what i did when i got fed up that day and plenty of you have been there and decided to forge another path turn right instead of left um, i went down the the path first of holistic health studying that understanding my body in a different way than i was ever raised or what i was taught and i really just the core basic foundations of like human physical health mm -hmm. so simple i can't believe like that I had no clue is basically nutrition, um, quality nutri nutrition, daily exercise, and then stress reduction, you know, and all the lifestyle pieces that go with that. So I had to meander on into the local YMCA in my baggy <laughs> sweats. Damn, that was brutal, but I did it and it wasn't pretty. So that's how it started. And of course, from there, I started to feel a little bit better. I started to learn more about myself as a human being and um, slowly over years transpired. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. the work just created the person I am today. So it, why, um, why endurance sports? I mean, why not mm -hmm. racquetball or surfing? I mean, what, what really pushed you towards, you know, the running and endurance world? Well, for sure, the fact that that's kind of what I had available to me, um, because it takes almost nothing. It basically takes a pair of tennis shoes. Oh, okay. And, you know, people even run barefoot, so you don't even really need the tennis shoes. <laughs> it takes very little equipment. It takes very little knowledge or expertise. Uh, it doesn't take a support system, even though it's super helpful if you have all of those things. Mm -hmm. So since I was initially forging this path by myself, I could do it, you know, pretty self-driven. And it, uh, a lot of times I would bait myself initially, it was hilarious, like if I went to the gym that day, then I could go out to eat or I could go get my Starbucks. So it was hilarious. There was <laughs> nice. still a pretty dysfunctional pattern that was going on initially. Sure. However, once I started to feel better and see results, I kept going, like that's what motivated me, is I understood, wow, I can feel better. And that was the number one thing besides the weight loss and what I was going to look like. It really was, I started to feel like myself again. Yeah. And so that's where I feel endurance sports, oh man, it's a game changer. Yeah. It changes <laughs> every aspect about your life, but it definitely, uh, you know, above all, changes how you feel about yourself, how you think about yourself, how you perceive the world. Mm. So, so then you took this this new passion on endurance sports, this new this new just internal drive, and quit your job. I mean, how did you go from from I'm getting healthier to I'm now going to manage this company and help other people get healthier too? How, how did that transition? So yes, I did have to quit my job. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. Scary. I had to. Scary. Um, because there was plenty of things that weren't working there either and it was just a really bad lifestyle choice for mm -hmm. me. But I had to dig in and do the work. So that work required a lot of time and attention. Now I was going back to school studying holistic health. I was still working part time mm -hmm. so I wasn't doing nothing. Um, but I was trying to balance all those things. As I chipped away down that path and started to feel better, uh, fate just had it that we ended up moving. My husband had a long-term business, he ended up closing down, and so we relocated. Oh. And in that relocation process to the Central Coast, moving from Encinitas, California, I decided, well, 
I really love this whole fitness jam. I think I'm going to become a personal trainer. Oh, cool. So just as a way to make a living and to add junk, like where was I going next and how was this all going to go, this new um, relocation aspect of our lives. And I still had a young child at the time. I thought, well, I'm going to do this personal training gig, see what that looks like. So that's really what started me down the profession in sports and fitness. That's where it started kind of, you know, at the basic foundation, train other people. And I got so fired up because I was losing weight, feeling better and really changing my whole life. And I couldn't think of anything better to do but, than help other people do that same thing. Oh, wow. That's awesome. So and, fun. And, and keeping in mind, this is mid thirties. Yeah. So mm -hmm. not, I mean, this is the journey started early thirties. Yeah. I'm 49 now. Almost. <laughs> wow. Yep. Um, 18 years ago. Wow. And that's, I think that's, that's, that's fascinating because a lot of people, you know, it's easy for people to make those dramatic changes when you're in your early 20s, fresh out of college. But early 30s, I mean, a lot of things have already been kind of set in place for a lot of people's lives. Oh, a lot of horrible point, patterns. Right? You were, okay. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. A lot of dysfunction. Yeah. And you have responsibilities. I mean, I had bills like everybody else. Mm -hmm. I had a child like plenty of people do. I was married. I mean, there's a lot of things where you have a responsibility. But um, I really understood at the end of the day, if I did not redo myself, mm -hmm. Sam 2.0, then there was going to be absolutely no happy family, no good marriage, no solid parenting, nothing. Like, what else if you don't have that what are you building upon yeah so it had to, it had to happen wow. and my family got behind me of course and supported that journey and they're very proud of all of the accomplishments and they're right on they're right on in yeah and some of your good habits have rubbed off on them I mean, eating a little sure. better or yeah I never more? really made it about other people it was my thing um, but for sure role modeling is you know a big part of being a good human in the world by the way is role, role modeling for everybody that you know is in your space, in your circle. Right, of course. Yeah. Pretty so cool. that's how that all started. I found a social group. I did my first 5K and then my first 10K. I have some pictures that are hilarious, but I did it. And I found on the other side of that, the whole finish line experience, what people mean, what they are talking about. Yeah. When we talk about the finish line transformation like it's legit oh, it's, it's real it's really a thing it's a thing really? absolutely because you didn't think you could do something irrelevant of what the thing is the sport and the activity and the distance all of that set aside um you don't know if you can do it and so you commit and you do the work to the best of your abilities and then you show up and then whatever happens that day happens, right? But when you cross the finish line, doesn't matter if it was good, bad, or ugly, mm -hmm. you cross the finish line, you're never the same person. Wow. You're never the same person. Like your life is changed forever because you prove to yourself, mm -hmm. irrelevant of everybody else, like, hell, I can do that. And then if I can do that, what else can I do? And that's really where the journey goes, you know? Wow, that's And I'm on a search for that, you know, like what's next? All right. Well, few a like, few years later, so Ray Slow was born of that. Is the point is I was a personal trainer, and then I became a coach. I got really into triathlon. I had a triathlon club. I was a triathlon coach. I was a running coach, um, and I chipped away at myself building uh, an endurance athlete lifestyle. It was so awesome. It still is so awesome. I really just am so stoked. Most days, I can't believe it's all happened. But the people that I've met, the places I've been to, hundreds of races, I've completely lost count that I've either been in myself or with my team or supporting others as a coach or working at races. So I built a lifestyle around endurance sports. And then 10 years ago, launched Race Slow with the simple concept of one race, local to San Luis Obispo, a cancer fundraising event called the Center Coast Cancer Challenge. Most of you probably have not heard of it, but a lot of you <laughs> may have. Some of you still wear the t-shirts around town, it's cool, um, which was a fundraising event, three bike rides, three runs, all in one day, raising money for local cancer survivors. And out of that, um, Race Slow was born. I knew after that event, there was nothing else I should be doing. Like, I have to be doing this for a living, race directing wow. and producing events because the impact is so massive. And I was already having an impact, right? Like I already had athletes I coached in a club and personal training clients and so forth, but like that next level impact, mm -hmm. oh, so awesome. We meet thousands and thousands of people um, where you know you're having a huge impact on their life and yeah. their experience here on this planet. I mean, that's, that's the gift. Wow. 
Right, so with endurance sports, I mean, let's let's admit it, it's not easy. <laughs> there's yeah. there's a lot of times you're out there on the beaten path and in the middle of nowhere, and things go bad. They do. Um, yeah. yeah, they go they go bad. So so what's uh, maybe maybe tell us a little bit about your I hate to go there, but your worst experience Ooh. and sort of how you overcame. Ah. Yeah. Well, I've had some good and bad experiences, mm -hmm. and uh, triathlon up to Ironman, and then into ultras and hundred milers and stage Oof. races and all kinds of fun stuff like that. So, boy, there's been a lot of bad. There's also been a lot of good. Of course. So, yeah. overcoming—that's my first hundred miler, without a doubt. That's the story of overcoming. I had no right being there. I was grossly undertrained. <laughs> I thought I wanted to do a hundred miler the following year, and I was trying to qualify for Western States, so I was on the Western States journey at the time um, but I showed up at a really small hundred miler in Northern California which is awesome Rio del Lago and I'd never run more than 50 miles in my life mm -hmm. and I said to the gal who was crewing me a good friend of mine Catherine that uh, today if I get to mile 60 or 70 like I'm so stoked because that would be a huge leap and I'm on my way to like this hundred mile goal for next year yeah so that was the whole idea so I uh, showed up went out plotted off in the dark with a hundred other people and kind of chipped my way through the day. Had a pretty good experience until about mile 45 or 50. Had a lot of blisters, was overheating, but then it started to get dark. So as I headed out into the darkness, uh, you know, not very experienced in this night running stuff, I got very, very cold um, to a point where I was, I couldn't even speak anymore. I was really cold. I was pretty jacked up, frankly. So by the time I got to the next aid station, which was somewhere around mile 67, the wheels had fallen off the bus. So I was no longer speaking. I was shivering. I was just totally jacked. Couldn't eat or drink. I laid in the dirt, uh, where my girlfriend, Catherine, helped me with this process and some other friends were there, David and and I laid in the dirt, literally, in a sleeping bag and tried to bring myself back to life, basically. So about 45 minutes later, a oh. couple cups of, of broth, some gluten-free crackers, so forth, I started to feel better. So I said to my friend Catherine, because I, I was done, I hadn't logged off the race, I wasn't DNF'd at this point, I was just still laying in the dirt at this aid station. Um, I feel better, I think I want to give it another try, see if I can get to the next aid station. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so she takes me into the bathroom, it's like one in the morning or something, takes off all my clothes, strips me down to nothing, puts on my clothes I had there, which were basically pajamas, I looked ridiculous. Um, and I said, okay, I'm gonna make it to the next aid station, meet me there, because I wanna just, you know, go like, so off I headed into the dark and I did feel a lot better and I was functioning. So I ran to the next aid station and I felt fine. Huh. And I said, I'll see you at the next aid station. So she keeps leapfrogging ahead, right? And I'm just like, at this point, I'm fully running. Like I'm not even like walking and slogging it out. Like I'm legitimately running at a decent pace. Wow. So I just started chipping away and running and running. The next time I saw her, I believe it was around mile 78. So at this point, I'd already far exceeded my ideas Unreal. for this event. So wow. I said to her, I'm going back out. I'm going to finish this 100-mile race no matter what the hell happens. I don't give a shit about the time cutoffs. I don't care about the award, the buckle. I don't care about any of that. Whatever happens is completely irrelevant. I'm going to finish this event. And she's like crying at this point, like, what is happening? I don't understand what's <laughs> happening. This is so awesome. And she's like, I want to pace you. So she jumps in, and I, we go slogging off. And literally into the wee hours of the morning, we're just running along these trails in the middle of the mountains. It was the most beautiful experience. And I was really having an out-of-body experience at this mm. point, like my brain and my body were not. So I didn't feel all these things that had gone terribly wrong with everything below my neck, but um, I was still running along. So the reality of the situation is I finished that race. I finished my first 100 miler, which is totally insane to me to this Holy day. Holy cow. Um, I did it wow. in the time cap. No way. And when I finished, I took my shoes off and every single toe was completely covered in blisters. I have this picture. It's hilarious. I have flip-flops on. Every toe is covered in blisters. My feet are totally jacked. I have a sprained ankle. I mean, I'm a, just a disaster. But I'm standing there like, what just happened? And it was the coolest thing ever. And that's what I'm talking about. Mm. Is like one minute you're laying in the dirt but you're not ready to give up. Like yeah. it could have gone, and it, if, I, if the wrong people were there, the environment wasn't right, if I didn't have my head in the game, all these things, I would have had every right to stay in the dirt. And my friends would have taken me home and dusted me off. And I've had those races, by the way, where I didn't make it out of the dirt. The game, it was over, I've had those races. But this was not that day. 
And this is the day I proved to myself yet again, like anything is possible. And endurance sports are magic. Like there's a magic there. And it's the people, it's the space, it's the, the depth of self-discovery. Yeah. I've never felt more fully alive. Unbelievable. That was it. But it's such a gamble. And it's probably another reason I love these, this world of endurance sports, all of these sports. It doesn't matter what we're doing. Um, there's so many things out of your control mm. and so many things that you do have control over. But at the end of the day, it's going to be what it's going to be. And 50% of it for sure for me is absolutely mental. I mean, I do the training, I put in the work, but if my head isn't there, that usually doesn't go well. And uh, sometimes when my head is really there, I can exceed all expectations of myself. And that's so cool. Gosh. And I love seeing that in other people. So that's what the gift is, that we get to do that with other people all the time. This is what we get to do with our lives. <laughs> yeah, right. And create life-changing events. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow. That's amazing. So so what uh, what's next? What's... What's next for Sam Pruitt in the world of endurance sports? Right, so I'm gonna be 49 this year. I'm looking towards my 50th birthday. Something big and audacious is going to happen. Stay tuned on that. Um, and really, it's more self-exploration. I mean, I'm very into triathlon and mountain biking and ultra running and all these different things. So I'm kind of looking to see what have I not done or what could I do that would might be a little bit different or go somewhere different and again, Put in the work right now. I've got 18 months before I turn 50. Um, I love the discipline and the focus around training, and I love all the camaraderie and stuff like that. Put in the work now and then do something totally amazing. So there'll be a lot of races leading up to that, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, getting in, back in shape. Right. I'm not in super ultra endurance shape right now. And I'm going to share that path with our audience. That's cool. So with the slow marathon coming up in 30 days, yeah. you know, um, how, do you, how do you carve out time to do the planning for that and the organizing for that and also training? Or is training kind of on hold until uh, you know May 1? Mm -hmm. um, I do training all the time. So I work out five to six days a week doing something. Okay. Sometimes seven days a week, depending on what I'm up to. You're a beast. I do not. Well, I just don't. <laughs> that's how my body feels good. Yeah. So training might be something for 30 or 40 minutes. It doesn't all have to be crazy stuff. So that's a part of my lifestyle. I will never go back to the couch. Mm -hmm. It's not happening. Um, so now that we've got all of these events and we are having a grand old time, it means that the team is like, they have my back, right? Like they're getting stuff done. So mm -hmm. when I'm not, they are. And I'm trying to make sure that I'm available to them um, to help them do what they need to do so we can excel together as a unit. You know, it's not an individual thing. There's an army of us that does this at Race Slow. Yeah. You're on that army. Right. Like, yeah. you know. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I work a lot. I play a lot. Hey, Sam, thanks so much for, you know, talking a little bit more about who it is that's going to be taking them on this journey to Endurance Town USA. Talking about the Endurance Town USA podcast and what we have coming up here in the future, uh, we're going to launch with a few different mini series. Uh, first one's going to be called Off Course. And really, what we're going to do is we're going to feature endurance athletes of all different disciplines and capabilities and, uh, you know, let you kind of see behind the curtain in their mind, like we did with Sam. Right we're going to go to the why with them. Yeah. We're going oh. to the why. Yeah, to the why. I love that. That's a great way of putting it. And our second mini series was sparked by our deep relationship with Race Roster. They are the leading industry professionals on registration platforms for anything and all events. Those guys are featuring the mini series Faces Behind the Races. And it's basically us telling our story, race directors and professionals and brands from all aspects of the endurance industry. We're going to really interview some interesting characters and tell you their why behind what they do in the industry. I think it's time to wrap it up. Yeah, and you know, guys, thank you so much for taking this journey with us to Endurance Town USA. I had a lot of fun. Learned a lot more about you, Sam. That was pretty I'm cool. coming back for more. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Hey, speaking of more, don't forget to hit subscribe now and, uh, you know, and share with your friends, too. Why not? Give them a little taste of the love. And if you need to find more information about us, you can at EndurancetownUSA.com. You can find us on iTunes and pretty much any other podcasting platform out there. Thank you guys for taking this journey with us to Endurance Town USA, and we'll catch you next time. Signing out. Hold on, bring it back. Hey.